and welcome back to Tech Tuesday. I'm Steve Leahy. So I hope you liked the title. I really don't hate dagger strokes, <laughs> but I hear this a lot. So I thought I'd um, kind of address this real quick because there are a ton of videos about these basic airbrush strokes that we do that kind of are the foundation of, of working with this tool. And um, so as a result, there are a lot of people who have videos and instruction on, on how to get these done. So I'm going to throw my hat into the ring on this because um, what I find is everyone learns differently. Um, and sometimes you run across someone who has um, a method of doing things that kind of resonates with you. So as you're watching these videos, hopefully this one will help. So let's start at the beginning. Um, there are three, to me, there are three basic airbrush strokes that you have to get down. Uh, and then if you get those down, everything else is foundational. It's ba basically, to me, it's like the alphabet of, of the airbrush world. Um, you get these down, then you can form your own words and you're off and running. So the number one thing you hear all the time, which is super important with a double action airbrush is when you're getting ready to do whatever you're gonna be doing, it's air on all the time. You press the trigger down and you hold it down all the time. Let me get the pad off here, it might be a little bit easier. Um, so you, no matter what you're gonna be doing, no matter what stroke, no matter what you're gonna be painting, you keep the air on all the time. And that does a lot of a lot of really great things for the airbrush. One, it keeps the paint off the needle so you get less tip dry, which is the paint drying right there in the end as you're working. If you're constantly letting off the air as you're working, uh, it's going to cause that paint to really collect there quickly and um, give you a lot of problems. Um, so air on all the time. That's number one. So this, there are three basic strokes that, that I would always teach people in the intro classes. The first one is really easy. It's the dot. So you get the air going and then you just gradually pull back the trigger and you get this dot. Now the trick with this one, and I was going to talk mostly about the dagger, but I'll go through all of them so you kind of get the foundation. The trick with this one is you don't want to just blast a dot on there. That's not the point. What you really want to do is just slowly pull the trigger back so that that dot develops like a, like a photograph, like an old Polaroid. That's what you want. You can be any distance you want to do this. The farther away, the softer that dot is going to be. The closer you are, the harder it is, harder it is to control, but you'll find that you can you know, pull back just a little bit, tiny bit to get that dot to work. Um, so that's not as important. You'll find it's different at every distance, which you should practice. But the most important part for this, for me, is make sure that dot develops slowly. You know, you don't, you don't want to just nail it. You want to really let it develop slowly. And that'll give you a lot of control. That'll allow the paint to dry on there, not spider web. And you'll save yourself a lot of aggravation. So that's, that's the dot. You just get a whole bunch of those going. The next one is the line. And the line is really easy because it's just a dot that you move. So when you start the paint, you get the dot, but then you just slide your hand across and then turn the paint off, leaving the air on all the time, air on all the time. So don't worry about what they call dumbbells, which are these, you know, little blobs of paint at each end. The more lines you do, the less that that will appear because you'll actually be able to move the line quicker when you start and end it quicker. So you'll, those little dumbbells will kind of disappear after a while. But again, you want to get the paint flowing and move it across and then turn it off and just practice them. You know, going every direction, you know, really helps out a lot to kind of get range of motion. You're going to find your hand loves to go in one direction more than another. So the lines are going to be nicer. Um, you'll find different things like speed will clean that up a lot too, but all that's secondary. It's really just getting the motion down, starting the paint, moving it across, turning it off and leaving the air going. That's what you want to keep in your, keep in your head. All these other things, the, you know, the dumbbells and the straightness of that line, those will come as you just kind of practice that. You'll feel it. You'll get it down. All right. Finally, the last and for me, the most important one, it's the one I use all the time is the fade stroke. So the fade stroke is really the same thing as a line. You start the paint going, and then as you move this across, you gradually push the trigger forward and let that paint just fade away. So just gradually push it forward and let the paint fade away. That's it. This I use all the time. This is, this is a stroke that I use to blend colors together to um, do all the repairs to, and even down to detail, this will come into play with detail as well. 
but what's really nice about this stroke is you really get a feel for what the airbrush can do by just fading that paint away. And that's where, right here, that's where all the control of the airbrush is. That's really where, where the money is. As you fade this away, you can really like get these imperceptibly fine mists of spray. And that's where, it, that's where you really find those. So that's the fade stroke. Now, the last one, and this is where the, the, the hatred of dagger strokes come in. Dagger strokes are really super important. They allow you to do the detail that you want to do with an airbrush. And what a dagger stroke is, I'll get a clean sheet here. A dagger stroke is essentially you're moving the, moving the airbrush closer to the surface and you get this really pointed, sharp line. So it starts off soft and then it gets, it gets really sharp. So here's what I found that works best when I was teaching. Don't worry about this. Concentrate on your fade strokes. <clears throat> Get that fade stroke to just kind of fade away. What I would do is as, as people were doing the fade strokes and doing them over and over again and practicing them, I would walk around and inevitably I would always find them. This right here is a dagger stroke. See how it gets thinner as it gets near the end? Because I had inadvertently when I was doing this fade stroke just kind of moved my airbrush a little bit closer and it faded, it faded away and got sharper like a dagger. So if you practice a fade stroke, all you're doing is letting that paint come off really, you know, really slowly. The dagger stroke will come automatically. You'll learn it automatically. You'll just get a feel for moving it closer as you move this across. So don't spend too much time stressing about this, the dagger stroke. It'll come to you if you get your fade stroke down. And the fade stroke's a lot easier to get down because you're not worried about moving your hand in and out. You're just rolling it across and fading it away. So that's my advice for you. Now the dagger stroke, like I said, is paramountly important. I actually love the dagger stroke. I don't, I don't hate it because all the detail work that I do, all those really tight little tiny things come from the dagger stroke. And what you're doing is you're starting, instead of doing this whole line for detail, you're just starting it right here and doing that little tiny dagger stroke. I'll zoom you in, show you what I mean. In the right spot, okay. So the dagger stroke really tightly will give you all those really fine details. So in order to get that down though, you know, you gotta work on it on a bigger scale, make it easier on yourself. But again, if you're new to this, just work on your fade stroke. Just keep working on your fade stroke and then I guarantee as you work on this fade stroke, you're just gonna naturally start seeing dagger strokes and then you'll feel it. You'll know, you know, you'll kind of get the feel for kind of dive bombing, you know, that, that fade stroke to give you that dagger. And it'll, it will come. It will come. So again, don't stress about it. Concentrate on the three biggies. Concentrate on the dot. Really developing that slowly. You know, you don't want to... The, the goal isn't to make dots. The goal is to really feel that paint developing very slowly. And if you... Jumping back to the dot real quick. If you really want to get a good feel for that, keep the airbrush pretty far back. So you can really see that developing slowly. And that's what you want. That's the control you want. So keep that in mind. And the same thing with the line stroke. You know, the, the line stroke is all about making that line, but what you're gonna find is as you do this more and more, and I ran out of paint, but as you do this more and more, you're gonna limit the amount of paint at the beginning and the end of the stroke just naturally, and that will get rid of the dumbbell. So again, that's more of a doing thing over and over again. You'll start to get a feel for it, and then muscle memory will really kick in, and that's, that's, that's what will we'll get it done for you. So again, in a quick recap, the three airbrush strokes that you want to get down to get started and really get a good foundation on what you're doing and avoid a whole bunch of problems later on down the road is the dot and again no paint uh, well i should put paint in there then all right there we go because <laughs> that was hard all right so again the three uh, i need another piece of paper there we go the three are the dot letting that develop really slowly and then turning the paint off but leaving the air on air on all the time the next one is the line, which is the same thing. You could practice this far away as well. It'll give you more chance to get that control down. And then finally, it's the fade stroke. So same thing as the line, but you're just going to really gently pull that, push that trigger forward. So those are the three biggies. And again, if you did the dot, if you go in this order and you do the dot the way I had mentioned, where you just really let it slowly develop, when you get down to the fade stroke, you can already have a feel of the airbrush. You're gonna have a feel of how, how gradually you can develop the paint. So as a result, on the other side, when you do the fade stroke, you really have a good feel for 
how to fade that off because you'll have you'll have all the experience up here so dot line and fade and then from there you're all set from there then start looking at the dagger stroke and you'll be good all right so that's what i got so for steve Leahy and tech tuesday thank you very much if you enjoyed this please like and subscribe and let everyone know and uh, we have new Tech Tuesday videos every week, as well as Open Studio, which you can actually hang out with me and watch me paint. Um, and that would be awesome. So great. Have a great week. And um, I will catch you guys on the next one.